And meanwhile, the Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky in his daily address is now offered to exchange Putin's ally who is in Ukrainian custody for Ukrainian soldiers who are in Russian captivity, prisoners of war. Viktor Medvedchuk, head of the pro-Russian party and Putin's closest ally in Ukraine, was arrested on charges of treason by Ukraine's security service. Zelensky has proposed the swapping of Medvedchuk in exchange for the prisoners of war held captive by Russia. Zelensky said that it was important for Ukrainian forces to actually seriously consider this possibility. Дуже символічно, що саме у день космонавтики був затриманий пан Медвечук. Він ховався 48 днів, а ось нарешті вирішив спробувати втекти за межі нашої держави. Що ж, для цього космонавта у поганому сенсі слова не спрацювала знамените «поїхали». Вважаю особливо цинічним з його боку використовувати військовий камуфляж. Намагався так замаскуватись. Ось такий вояка, ось такий патріот. Що ж, якщо Медведчук сам обрав для себе військову форму, він підпадає під правила воєнного часу. Пропоную Російській Федерації обміняти цього вашого хлопця на наших хлопців і наших дівчат, які зараз в російському полоні. Тож важливо, щоб наші правоохоронні органи і військові також розглянули таку можливість. And since the start of this invasion, millions of people were forced to flee their homes. The town of Bashtanka in southern Ukraine has become a central point for refugees from nearby Russian-occupied towns now. Moshmi Singh gets you an exclusive ground report from this refugee center. They left everything behind and traveled in this bus hoping that they were reaching to safety. A mother and a daughter here, you can see in this bus, bus that just arrived in Bashtanka, uh, almost uh, 30 people got down off this bus. You can see it is very cold and this they are coming from Snegirovka, which is in Mikulai, which is under Russian occupation. First, we'll show you the state of this bus, which is completely, the sh uh, glasses are shattered, it's been covered, it's in mud, and there is a writing that is, has been written all around this bus, even at the, at, in the front, you can see that in black, this has been sprayed, saying that this is a children's bus. Are they killing people, civilians? Uh, uh, what is the scene there? Describe I don't have full information. I know exactly when they bombed one of the buildings, one, uh, one civilian was killed. But uh, a lot of uh, people who have uh, damages, of course, in general. So here you can see an elderly woman. She's got a stick in her hand, uh, two bags, and that's the picture of the humanitarian crisis uh, that is, in fact, you know, uh, ravaging this entire country. With me, the journalist Parminder Sharma, this is Mosmi Singh in Bashtanka for India Today. The Russian economy, whether Putin admits it or not, has been severely hit by the multiple sanctions imposed on it by the United States, the UK, European Union, Canada and Japan, just to name a few. These sanctions are maximum in rage imposed on any country since World War II. But Vladimir Putin says that they're all part of the game and he remains unfazed. The blitz that ill willers hoped for didn't work. It's obvious. Our financial system, our industry works smoothly. Countered Russian President Vladimir Putin. Sanctions imposed on Russia by the US, UK, EU and other countries include banning secondary trade in Russian government bonds, banning interaction with key Russian banks, banning exports of critical technology to Russia and freezing the assets and banning travel for elite Russians. In addition, Germany halted certification of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Once the Russian invasion of Ukraine crossed one month, came a fresh batch of sanctions. 
This time, the United States tightened penalties on two of Russia's leading banks, including the country's largest financial institution, Sperbank, leaving in place an energy carve-out that allows them to process payments for oil and gas. The US also sanctioned Russian President Vladimir Putin's two adult daughters and the wife and daughter of Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. World Bank estimates that these sanctions will shrink Russian economy by more than 11% this year. But revenues from energy exports are actually increasing. Moscow expects to earn $9.6 billion in additional revenue from energy sales in April alone thanks to high oil prices, which remain around $100 a barrel. Defiant against the Western sanctions and ever provocatively confident, the Russian president gloated about the progress of his army in Ukraine. As for the progress of the operation, I can often hear questions if we can do it faster. We can. It depends on the intensity of military actions. The intensity of military actions is somehow related to losses, unfortunately. Our goal is to achieve all objectives, minimizing losses. Nothing's changed in Vladimir Putin's world. The country has been hit by the maximum sanctions so far since the world wars. If our partners aggravate the situation in the financial, insurance sphere, in the area of transport, including maritime transport, then the situation will worsen for them, among other things. Food shortages or incredibly high prices on world markets will lead to hunger in regions throughout the world. It's inevitable. The next step would be new wave of migration, including to the Western countries. In Russia, indigenous businesses are eager to fill the gap created in domestic markets after the sanctions pushed Western companies out. Of course, it's good for us all if they leave, because in that case, people will start to be interested in other brands of clothes. They will be interested in Russian brands. Before, when they needed jeans, they would buy it at Zara. Now, they start to look at who is on the market. On a daily basis, some areas in Russia complained of shortage of sugar and salt. Putin's government arranged for special markets to allow people to restock. I don't need much sugar, but it's just that it's not available at all. The sanctions were supposed to hit the Russian economy hard. Ruble fell sharply. Pundits predict doom for Russian GDP, which is modest compared to the USA or the UK. But for the Russian president, who carries a fearsome black briefcase, prepared for any nuke trigger along with him all the time, the end is still not here. Bureau Report, India Today.